Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday morning, so you know it's time for another live edition of The Extra Point. We have the His and Hers, Bonnie and Clyde edition coming straight at you today. Got Miss Tasha T. Sizzle riding shotgun. What's going on today, T. Sizzle? Nothing, just chilling, just relaxing. Just came back from the gym about 30 minutes ago, so I'm glistening. You're glistening, you're glowing, you're looking firm and fit and all that. Okay, I mean, we ain't gonna cuss this morning. All right, we got a jam. Oh, I said, well, okay. We got a jam packed show for you today, Tasha. You, you, you know how we get down when this is us too. Um, I got a lot of questions for you that I know you got the answer to. But before we get into any of that, first we got to give a shout out to our sponsor. We are sponsored by May Jane's Coffee. That's M A E J A N E S Coffee dot com. You can get your Colombian and your whiskey blend coffee freshly ground and mailed to you. I'm going to say shipped since somebody told me the words that I say don't sound right. <laughs> you by my lovely daughter. She also has T-shirts. She has cups. She has the flavored syrups to go in your coffee as well. Again, that's May Jane's Coffee, M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S, coffee.com. Right on a shout out to our sponsor, Miss Denise. Denise, hello to her as well. And we also want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Wolverine Comics. It is um led by one Mr. Michael Hasso. Make sure you follow them on Instagram for all of your comic needs. If you into Marvel and all that stuff, make sure you go hit them up on Instagram. He will take good care of you. And speaking of taking good good care of. We're going to continue our countdown to kickoff with our final division in the AFC, Tasha T. Sizzle. So we're going to jump right into this. You see the colors. You see the Kings of the South. The, the reigning two-time defending AFC South champion Tennessee Titans once again take the field in a quest for the three-peat. Now, let's just get right to it, Tasha. Are, are the Titans going to three-peat this season as division champs? No. I'm sorry, can you please, please explain to the people why it is yes? <laughs> like, that bug, yes. like that Bugs Bunny meme? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, okay, so if that's no, then I'm guessing that you're saying the Indianapolis Colts will take them down this year. Is that what you're saying, Tasha? Yes, shout out what? to my mother. That's her favorite team. Yes, she loved, she loved Peyton Manning, even when he left. But see, she's a true fan. Even when he left, she still pulled for the Colts. I'm glad that you brought up True Fan because now that I have you here in a one-on-one -on -one setting, for the whole public, if you will, like Dusty Rhodes once says, this is for the public, if you will, we want to get this right out in the air, you know, right out. Tasha T. Sizzle, why are you a Nashville native, homegrown Tennessean? Why do you hate the Tennessee Titans the way that you do? Uh, remember, I'm not homegrown. I just – was there. I just you can't you can't say that you spent too many quality years there to just be there. I mean, I just I just never caught on because I was one, of course I'm an NFC West girl myself, and I could never see my team play as was. And then when you bring another team that is an AFC team, and then I'm really shut out when it comes to the NFC, it pissed me off. It bothers me. So you're so this is more of network beef than than Tennessee Titans beef. Is that what you're saying? Right. Even though I work for the Titans organization, shouts out to all my little buddies who are still there, uh, club level West Side. But uh, <laughs> that was pretty dope, though. That, that, that was pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even when you came, what did I have on up under my shirt? A 49er shirt. Now let's get to that because T Sizzle, you've become synonymous on social media for your infamous top fives to close the shows. You, we get a lot of arguments and, and buzz about your top fives. So in honor of one Miss Tasha T. Sizzle, I'm going to do PL's top five. And it's in your honor. We're going to go over the top five reasons why your ass should be a Tennessee Titans fan. All right? Can we do that? Can Are you a Tennessee Titans? Hey. Let's, so let's get it started. You see, the first of all, the color scheme. You're wearing the colors already. It looks good on you. It's got you nice up, fleeced up, and creased up. Might I add, and, and your Titan blue and your Titan hue, you're looking good in that. So the color fits you. Fits you. Yeah. you got on the Titans colors already. This was see, this was magical. She had no idea I was going to do this, ladies and gentlemen. But she's a Titan girl at heart. So let's go with number one. 
it's your hometown team, first and foremost. Your grandma or her beautiful soul raised you in the northeast of Nashville. On the east side, the south side, you got people that you know. You went to school in North Nashville, one Pearl Cone, comprehensive high school, where you graduated two slots ahead of me in the academia, but we'll get the to that. Lies. One you didn't finish ahead of me? I thought you... All right. You was in honors. You had a black robe. That's all that counts. Mama, she had a black robe. Number two, the Titans are in the AFC. They're not even a natural rival of your 49ers. So you can actually have the best of both worlds. You can have an AFC team, an NFC team that never mixes in between. I do have an AFC team. Now you're about to really piss me off. Who's your AFC team? The Steelers. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we want to thank our sponsors for today's show. Y'all be safe since, out there in traffic. Ever since all my Epps took over. No, now you have always you have bet on black. I, I give you that. But but damn, there's brothers on the Titans. Number three, you worked at the stadium, as you so eloquently put. You got you got ground roots in there. They put money in your pocket and you turn your back on the Titans. That's blasphemous. Number four, and this might be the most important one. You could be the mother-in-law of a Tennessee Titan. One Denise Denise has moved back home to the motherland. She's smart. She's beautiful. She has her own money. She's she's a, a corporate monster in her own right. She can be one Mrs. Jeffrey Simmons. You can I have a clanger clanger. That was the mama. That wasn't the girl. You see, you see, you see what she said? Yes. Yes. There's plenty of players to choose from. She Thank probably makes more than most of the rookies. Her and Jeffrey Simmons are friends. They clang a clang a together. Wait a minute, they're what? Can we can we do that? Uh, no, they are they are friends. She knows him. Babyface to told us in the '90s you have to become friends before you become lovers. It's We're no, rooting no, for you, Denise. Denise, no you way a Titan. He no will be. Him. He will be blessed to have you. Tasha will have a Titan as a son-in-law. We're all rooting for it. Get your paper, Denise. Denise. Um, and fifth, she, oh wait a minute, she was like, "Nah, I'm good." <laughs> but she knows him. It's just okay. Well, well, we'll find another Titan for you. We'll, maybe Ryan Tannehill, if you want to put a little cream in your car. All right. Um, at number five, Tasha, and I mean this because we go back thirty years, three whole decades. I mean this. You might as well. You ain't got nothing else to lose. The San Francisco ain't winning no more. I'm telling you as a friend. Excuse me. San Francisco. Excuse me. San Francisco ain't winning no more. So you might as well just come on over to the Titans and lose with us. And lose where, where you have some familiarity, you know. You got family, friends, all sick of the Titans together. Come on home. Don't be on the West Coast in agony by yourself. Come on home. You got your, your Titan blue on right now with the under and the over. Uh, I'm just saying that's my top five reasons why you should become a Titans fan. So what size jersey should I send to the DR? Uh, no size. As I digress. So let's, let's get back to the, to the breakdown because I got a couple of more division questions for you. Uh, Tasha T says, well, who's the best running back in the AFC South? Is oh, we it already, you pull out your crown. I'm going to, it's, it's, it's Kane Henry. Now, Kane. Jonathan Taylor of the Indianapolis Colts led the league in rushing last year. I mean, I, hey, you know, I was pulling for Jonathan Taylor too. But you know, had we like we said, had Kang Henry not broke his foot, it, it ain't no telling where he would have been. And if, and if the yeah, Titans were losing to you last year and not brought King Henry back for the playoff game against the Bengals, we might have went advanced because he had a horrible game and he clearly wasn't fully ill. You were right. I'm just giving you your flowers while you're alive. You were right. I was wrong on that. Um, now speaking of wrong, but before we get into that, last question on the AFC South: Who's the worst team in the division? Jacksonville or Houston? Oh, by far, I'm going to say Houston. I mean, I, Ooh, I, hate, by far, I, hate, huh? I hate that I can't bet on black in this particular instance. I just think Jacksonville has more of an upswing at this point. Houston doesn't even have a quarterback. They don't know what's going on uh, with anything down there. At least we know that Jacksonville has uh, has a quarterback. And we can actually name three or four Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey. I don't think we can name four Houston Texans. Right I just, now, know, I just know Simone Biles' fiance, and I don't even know his name. Wow, his name is Simone Biles. That's all you need to know. So we're deadlocked once again. You got Indianapolis for the fifth straight year. 
knocking off uh, Tennessee. Tennessee is going to three peat and it's going to be a magnificent celebration to which you will come on board and finally come home and, and don your Tennessee Titans uh, paraphernalia. Now, now, Tasha T. Sizzle, I know you've seen this, and, and for those of you who just got out today on Warrants, welcome. You've missed some dramatics when it comes to the NFL, as it always is. One Kyler Murray. I need you to help me with this, Tasha. Now, earlier in the week, Kyler Murray was riding the highest wave. He had uh, just become the second highest paid quarterback in the league at $46.1 million a year. To <clears throat> Woo, that made me. That made I, me ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say what I was gonna say, but don't, but, don't say it. 230 million point five overall. And then later on in the week, we, we get a leak a view of the contract that has this um this language, uh independent study clause language in it, saying that he has to at least study outside of the facility four hours a week, or he could be in jeopardy of voiding his contract. Tasha, now I know they've since recanted that because of all the blowback that they received, but can we just start with your overall thoughts on why you would put an independent study clause in for a quarterback you're giving that much money to? Obviously, he's not doing something. Let's just go on and get it out there. Like right, my right. Devil says, it's a dead cat on the line somewhere. <laughs> it wouldn't be a need to put that in there if they felt he was doing everything he was supposed to be doing. Facts. Now, as far as it leaking, I think that was monkey because I don't, I mean, who put that out there? Because it's basically you putting your business in the street. Arizona didn't probably want that business out and we know Kyler didn't want that business out, but he's not doing something as to why they put that clause in in there. It, it's, it's something's not going, not, that they don't like that he's doing it. And I did say he was very childish at one right. point with all the taking his out, scrubbing his account and then asking for money when you haven't really done anything. That's childish. Right. And, right. and he had two years left on his deal, but I want to go back to what you just said as far as the scrubbing the account. Do you think that during the ongoing parts of the negotiation for the new contract, he caught wind of that language and that's why he lashed out? No. Mr. Sega Genesis is... <laughs> Playing Call of Duty with OBJ with the headsets on, and they he's not if he the hell up. <laughs> right if you're using Madden as your study time, <clears throat> even though Madden is lifelike, damn near right. I, like I said, and I understand what everyone is saying why that shouldn't. It's embarrassment. They shouldn't have. It put is embarrassing. It. I'm embarrassed because, for him because it's making it. And I know RG three was saying, you know, as far as black quarterbacks go, it's hard enough for us to get, you know, for them to get out there because they think that black quarterbacks aren't as smart as white quarterbacks and they can't lead a team. So it may be a little backhanded as to why they put that in there, but they put it in there for a reason. Something is going on that they're not. Everybody's not coming out with now. With you, Tasha, if you were if you were the in the front office uh, at Arizona, would that be enough? You're still giving the guy forty six point one million dollars a year. That that's a hefty investment uh, for so he'll be tied in for the next seven years in Arizona. What, how could you give him that kind of money and you're worried about his his work ethic? I mean, the number one thing about your job should be your work ethic. Am I correct or wrong on that? I mean, I just think at this point they are. I mean, he's a he's a good quarterback. I'm not going to say he's not, but I think at this point with the, the way these quarterbacks are, you know, good quarterback play is hard to find. It is. And Increasingly one, hard to find. Yes, and you have one that you can actually build around and is viable. They want to keep him, which is, you know, I mean, I do understand. I, I think that it's stupid that the Haslam's gave oh, freak nasty all that money, but it's like, who else you going to get? Right. And then, right. I mean, and this goes back to the Lamar Jackson thing with me, too. It's like, I know Lamar Jackson's like, damn, can I get an infinity stone, too? Like, why y'all, why for y'all got to take all the stones? Can I get the purple one that's right here on, on the knuckle? It's five left. Give me a damn stone. Like, I know he, I mean, I'm just wondering what the holdup is with Lamar. I mean, then, I mean, I know I'm jumping the gun on this, but you got fat ass down there in New Orleans, and I know you said, Something about him getting his bread. He's getting the baguettes. He's getting the ficelle. He's getting the brioche. The right. And that's Zion Williamson. For for those who, who don't follow basketball, 
He right. has a similar clause in his contract that said that he must stay below 295 pounds combined muscle and fat. Right. Or else he could be in, in jeopardy of losing his guaranteed money as well. Or he ain't going to get his bread. But his problem is he's too busy eating all them French breads I just named. <laughs> Like, they got some good cuisine down there in the NO. Yes. But that's why I'm saying, like, they, they put they're putting these clauses in these in these contracts for a reason. Right, right. They're right. You don't you don't just slip that in. And and the thing that that I really that really popped out to me was the fact that Kyler Murray, when your contract was was initially introduced to us, you had signed it. You so you read over the language in that contract. This wasn't a peekaboo. Where they, right. where they just kind of did a bait and switch and you got a hold to another contract with language in it, you negotiated this into your contract. You knew they wanted this, so why are you acting mad about it now? Right, don't, it don't act, don't you act mad. I, mean, I was listening to another podcast and they had Jamarcus Russell on there. And he you put... On extra point. I mean, sometimes when I'm cleaning up, I sometimes I go... You gotta step, right, we can't be on 24 hours a day. Go ahead, proceed. And they were saying, like, now I know they were, I mean, I, a lot of the stuff that Jamarcus Russell did, it was self-inflicted, even though right. I listened to him discuss a and lot that of That was a good interview. That was a good and interview. And why, oh, so you watched it too? Yes. You listened to it too. So why, you know, why things happen. But one of the things he was saying was they was putting out there, like, he wasn't doing any kind of studying. Right. And right. I think by what, what a lot of people are saying, by you putting that in the closet, making people think that, Kyler is not doing any studying, but it just said outside of. Right, right. And four hours doesn't sound like a lot when you think of uh, of people, let's just say in your normal 40-hour work week people, that you probably have a hobby that you spend at least four hours a week doing, whether it's video games, whether it's working out, whether it's walking your dog, whether it's whatever it is. I mean, a lot of people can have an extra four hours to invest. And we get these images of the Peyton Mannings, of the – of the Tom Brady's who live in the in the the um, you know the facility watching film all night. The, the, I mean, does everybody you, have to do that though? The, you don't have to do all of that, but some some that's how you get great because at what some point look look at who you just named. They have no athletic ability. Great point. They they most of the and they sit atop the, the the Mount Rushmores of any quarterback in any era. Right. You got to get in that playbook at some point. You just think if somebody really took the time to get in that playbook with that athletic ability, you would basically be unstoppable. Right. I remember uh, Blaine, the hitman Bishop, uh, one of the, the all pro safeties from the glory years of the Tennessee Titans, talking about Peyton Manning and preparing for Peyton Manning and how it was like preparing for Houdini. You'd have to go back two, three, four years how he would constantly change his audibles, how he would study your movements, how he knew when he was, when Blaine was blitzing just from studying film and how Blaine would get in his own head to try not to show tendencies. Now you're not playing at, at top speed and he's getting, and he's burning you. So, so for that, I think collar, uh, you, you can't be athletic forever. You can't. And these stationary quarterbacks are showing you that really it's mostly up here. It's mostly in the it head. Is. How it's do you think this world. ends in Arizona? Do you think that he even gets out of this contract? Well, it depends on what's around him because Captain America, J.J. Watt, can never stay healthy. Uh, D-Hop, he's out because he in there using deer tar. Right. Or right. Okay, uh, 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 Ray Lewis. Right, he's over there sucking on deer bones and shit and stuff. So you never, I mean, you you never know. And what else is around him? You know, they had a pretty decent running game. They got what's the the Connor guy from came from Pittsburgh. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's decent. Yeah, James. Yeah, you know, they, I mean, they got some good pieces. But again, everyone knows a team. You're only as good as your quarterback in most cases because right. Ty, uh, Trent Dilfer did win. A Super Bowl, but look at what he had around him. Right, right. And I think even in that Super Bowl, they had a defensive touchdown and a kickoff return yes. for a touchdown. Yeah. You know, in a twenty to seven to, to, to seven win. So he, he didn't even have to do anything but hand the ball off. Right. Um but, but you're right. Now, uh staying with the quarterbacks, and I think his mama leaked it, actually. I think the Kyler Murray's mama or somebody leaked that that contract deal to embarrass Arizona into taking the language out. But it's too late. The damage is already done. Because I sent that to you, but, I mean, we didn't I – did, I think I oh, deleted it. No, we – yeah, no, we do have that. Uh, the actual uh, verbiage from the Arizona Cardinals 
we do have that courtesy of Miss Tasha T. Sizzle. Um, they're, they're saying after seeing the distraction it created, we removed the addendum from the contract. It was clearly perceived in ways that were never intended. <clears throat> Lies. Our confidence in Kyler Murray is as high as it's ever been, and nothing demonstrates our belief in his ability to lead this team more than the uh, commitment reflected in this contract. Your thoughts, Tasha? <laughs> Look, and uh, we're back. Um, yeah, the, the, you got caught with your pants down. Yeah. Although I don't blame you, Arizona. I would protect myself as well. If, but but here's the thing, though. Like you said, there's such a there's such a a, a need at the quarterback position yeah. for someone who can actually get you to the playoffs. Not even just be comparable, but to get you to the playoffs and win, which Kyler Murray has done. He's been a Pro Bowler. He has been electrifying. He was Rookie of the Year. He he has lived up to what you would want a number one pick to be, and he's done that without studying. I think that if he can humble himself and use this as an opportunity to grow, that Arizona could be on to something. This right. is going to be all about Kyler Murray. Yeah, yeah. It, it's all at this point. It's all in the hands of of Kyler Murray. Now they give you this money to go out there and play, and then but then when they want to trade you or renegotiate your contract, you're mad. Right. You don't want to give no money back, but you're out there playing like hot shit. Like he did against the Los Angeles Rams. And you know what? And another thing, Collar, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a little bit of a little bit of accountability. It's okay for you to say, hey, I played like shit. Uh, that was my bad. Um, we're we're going to come back better. And that might have something to do with the contract clause as well. Because the Arizona Cardinals fans were not happy with him being so dismissive about his own play in that Monday night game. Right. Aaron Donald and the boys put them hands all over him. Right. So, yeah, like you said a while back, you called it the maturity issues that you were concerned with with Kyler Murray. They're starting to rear their ugly head. We'll see how that plays out. Now, staying in the, in the division, which I'm throwing a curveball right now because it's sitting on our script, but you're a 49er fan. They, uh, The 49ers brass had just given Jimmy Garoppolo permission to seek a trade. Do you like the timing of this? Do you think they should do the trade? Are you ready for trade, baby? to take your team to the Super Bowl because you have a championship caliber squad now. Trey Bay Bay. Trey Bay Bay. In the club, holler, Trey Bay Bay. Trey Bay Bay. (laughs) Now, will he be Trey Bay Bay come week six or seven, Tasha T. Oh, you, uh, unlike you and Mike. Don't do that. Shouts out to Michigan Mike. Unlike you and Mike, if he, if he going to be out there playing like crap, I'm going to call them on it. What are you suggesting, Tasha, that we baby our teams? What are you saying? Yes, you-, you do. Like, Mike will fight you, will gash your, your eyeballs out if you say something bad about Michigan when the proof is in the pudding. You read that is it, very it, true. It's in black and white. Say something about the that's Titans. True. I love you, Mike, but that's true. Or say something about say something about the Titans. Say something about LeBron James, and you ready to just 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 that. say something about LeBron James, and and I'll be doing the show in the DR. I'll get there. <laughs> But I mean, it's and everyone oh, wants to, say, have to call us out like that. Damn, and that nobody wants to say, "Oh, Garoppolo got the 49ers here. He got him there." Okay, but but when and when it was time for him to show up and be the number one quarterback and do what he's supposed to do, what did he do? What did he do? What did he do? He pulled a Dak Prescott. Hey, Shamika. He Look at good. Hey, the creases. It's a crease week here at the extra point. <laughs> you see the crease. Go ahead, in, the, in the Super Bowl against uh, Kansas City, what did he do? Threw a, threw a pass oh, in his damn Emmanuel high school. Sanders had that game won. What did, and, and remember, I told you when it was that NFC, game won. in the NFC Championship game, and, you, and somebody would go back and pull my tweets when it left us with that time, and I tweeted, I said, if we're depending on Garoppolo to win, we are gone. We're done. And what did he do in that NFC championship game? But Tasha, he his his winning percentage is is up there with some of the all time greats when you talk about minimum games started. The Again, guy is a winner. But it's not due to all necessarily his his play. He he's not a closer. He's not a finisher. Okay, he so let me finish. so let me let me just go ahead and back you up with some nerd stats on that. He has the worst quarterback rating in NFL history in the fourth quarter of the playoffs. I just heard that on, on Get Up the other day, just to prove your point. Tasha, you in your bag today. All right, keep going. He, that he, is true. He's not a closer, and that's what that that's is very what we, true. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. 
I mean, that, that, I mean, that's it. I mean, let the new kid get out there. You you paid him. You 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 moved up to draft him. Let him get on. Let him get on the field. And and the thing is, he don't do it, San Francisco. Put they, Jimmy back out there if he's healthy. They Put no. Jimmy they back need, out there and get they, your ring. No, he's not going to get us a ring. They need to go ahead. It's going to be hard to trade him. Now, the surgery is what's screwing everything up because people are going to look at him as damaged goods. They're going to be like, okay, first of all, he underperforms and he banged up. Right. Right. That's like being ugly and broke. You got to pick a struggle. You know what? How do I log out of here? I'm just saying, you can't be both. You, Where's you gotta, the studio, <laughs> but you gotta have, you gotta bring something to the table. But the thing is, if you're San Francisco, and I'm, and I don't have a dog in the fight. They they beat up my Dallas Cowboys in the wild card round. Jimmy Garoppolo, he kept us in the game. Yes, he did. And I'm not even being uh, hyperbolic when I say this. When you look at their team, Jimmy. He he does enough. He has a good defense. Y'all always the Shanahan's is gonna always have a running game. Oh, I can be running back, yeah. and and I can get about twelve hundred, maybe three point five yards per carry at forty six years old. I mean, you got the defense is always gonna play hard. You got Debo still coming back. You get healthy at the running back. You have the best offensive tackle in the league. Oh, anchoring your offensive line. You're well coached. You your your, your kicking game has been shored up. You have zero weaknesses. Running back with Jimmy Garoppolo. Don't get too cute, San Francisco. You got the money. Don't be too cute. No, we need that money because we need to make sure Debo is taken care of. Get that bum out of town. Damn. And on that note, speaking of bums, Big Ten had their uh, media days this week. And a person that we both look at as bums, that's Ohio State Athletic Director Gene Smith. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, he basically said that he would ultimately like to see a 16-game college football playoff. Natasha, I'm going to come to you with that because your facial expression tells me you do not agree. Is 16 games too many? 16 teams, I'm sorry. 16 teams is too many. That's way too many. Because, again, that's basically you might as well take everybody in the top 25. The number one person gets a, a first, a first round by. Right. And think about it. Uh, over the course of of a in, of a college football season, it's the 16th team that's playing in the Holiday Bowl or the Idaho Potato Bowl. Are they really championship caliber? No, and that's the thing too. You know, I have an issue with all them damn bowl games. Ain't nobody watching that. You really did that. You you voiced your displeasure about that when we tried to get you to pick them bowl games last year. The you bowl like, games no. start like the first week of December. On the first week of December. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Primera se semana de diciembre. It starts the first week of December. Who the hell is thinking about some bowl games? We are just in the thick of NFL. Nobody gives a damn about a bowl game right. in the December. And by that time, if you're outside the top four, you don't give a damn no way because you ain't in the playoffs. But where, where we found ourselves in the playoffs as Michigan fans last year, so you know we didn't care about the the Monarchy, the Monarchy uh, Car Bowl and the, the, the beat the brakes off your bowl in Bama. And because in my opinion, with me, my football season, depending on how much more I'm going to watch, depends on what happens on that Thanksgiving weekend in either Ann Arbor or either in the horse shit. It's either <laughs> or. In the what? The horse shit. I love it. <laughs> Take that, Ohio fans. That might be a real. Keep your eyes out on that today. Um. So where is your sweet spot then, Tasha? How many teams – or do you think we shouldn't have any expansion at all? I mean, I think it does need to be expanded simply because you do have those teams that are just like right on the cusp right. that I think would would do, would, you know, would, would kind of do something. And, and any given day, whichever way the ball rolls or turns, somebody can be upset. Yes. So I, would, sure. I wouldn't mind seeing an 18 playoff because, like I said, one through eight, it's because you know those one through eighteens. You just most of them only have one loss, right? And which and normally the loss is to somebody who finished in the top four. Yeah, usually they'll get knocked out late in the season and, and be right on the outside of that. Um, yes, I could do. I, I would and I could do. I would do eight. The the sixteen teams show a lack of confidence on the part of uh, Ohio State Athletic Director Gene Smith. I don't think it shows a lack of confidence. I mean, is he thinking all sixteen? You know. Four or five of those are going to come from the Big Ten. 
So you just greedy. You just trying to take all again. Oh, you trying okay. to take, you trying to take all the Infinity Stones, Thanos? <laughs> the Infinity, the, the Marvel edition today. I'm loving this. Um, like let I mean, let somebody else have a stone. Damn. Right now, and the thing is, I like the the eight teams. Um, going back to your 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 sweet spot there, because with these conference realignments, you're having more competition within your own uh, conference. Then you know if you're if you're Texas or you're um, Oklahoma. You can breathe a little easier knowing the top eight teams can get in. Maybe you can be a one or two loss team and still make the playoffs. Where now you going into the SEC knowing good and damn well you're not going to be in that championship game. Right. You you're just not going to be there, and you got to play each other at, down here at the, at the fair. That's not going like <laughs> at the fair. Gonna... Look, not not the not the Red River Shootout. I mean, I mean the Red River Rivalry at at the fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean that did kind of diminish it a little bit. It is a big time fair, ladies and gentlemen. If you've never been to the Texas State Fair, you're missing it out on the bucket list. It is amazing. Item. It is amazing. But yeah, I, I like the um, I like the idea of eight teams as well. Now, staying in the Big Ten with Media Days, I know we were talking about Harbaugh last week, but I'm about ready to to pull out an oldie but goodie and and, and do a shut the hell up segment. Because I'm growing increasingly weary about the stuff that's coming out of Jim Harbaugh's mouth. Now, this week, we're in Big Ten Media Days. You have the defending Big Ten champions. You just come off your first college football playoff. You just got an extension. You beat Ohio for the first time. You have a five-star quarterback in weight and a a starting quarterback that just led you to a, a Big Ten title. You have depth on offense. You have depth on defense. But what are you up there on the podium talking about? You're talking about pro-life and, and pro-choice. Shut the hell up. First of all, you're a man. Why are you weighing in? You 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 don't even have a VJJ. So why are you? All right, Tasha, this is what he said. I want to get your thoughts on this. <laughs> now, he had made noise about being at a pro-choice, um, no, a pro-life function where he was the keynote speaker. That's fine. Pro-life, pro-choice. As long as you love sports, you are welcome here at the Extra Point. I don't have a, uh, an opinion one way or the other about that. But what what I did raise my eyebrow at is when he said, if any of his players fathered a child where a pro-choice would come into play, then he would just go ahead and tell the kids he raised the child himself, saying, and I quote, we have a big house, we'll raise them. Tasha, is he crossing the line with this? Is he doing too much? What's, I need what's to know that? who the daddy of this chocolatey baby is. <laughs> Eyes be the pappy. Is that who he is? Eyes be the pappy. I the pappy. <laughs> who is he, Mr. Drummond? <laughs> like, like, no, for real, Jim, shut the hell up. We can, like, what are you doing? And like, this is the thing I always say. I don't know too many people other than serial killers who ain't pro-life. That, that's just my thing. Like, who wants somebody dead? Right. But you know what I'm saying? Let's just get that out there. I do believe anybody, again, I am a uh, supporter of LGBT community. I'm a supporter of people doing whatever the hell they want to do. It does not bother me. And that's the thing I have. If you, if you, don't, if you don't like abortion, don't have one. But right. don't look down your nose and try to guilt people into not having one. When people are doing what's best for them, and I can tell this personal story, it broke my heart. You know, I'm I'm the dog lady. I'm a cat lady, but with dogs. And one of the little dogs that I watched, she went in the heat, and I brought her in the house. I thought I got her in enough time, but I didn't. I just started looking and looking. I was like, oh, my God, she's pregnant. I had to make the hard choice, decision, to take her to the vet and get her spayed while she, she had puppies in her belly. Oh, wow. It, I mean, when she came, I mean, she's had at least four or five litters, which is not healthy for a, you know, for any dog, especially a street dog. And when, when the attendant brought her back down, she came and she laid at my feet and I looked at it and I said, lo, lo siento, mommy. I said, it's may whore. I mean, I'm sorry, mommy. It's better. I was going to say, did you call her a whore? What? The dog didn't do nothing. The dog was just being his animal instincts. So as I'm sitting there, 
I turned to my left and I looked at the vet and the vet and I were crying. It was a very hard decision. So when you think about, you have a woman who is making that decision. It's not always, it's not always an easy decision to do that. It was, and this is a dog people I'm talking about. And my heart was broken. Now she back out there dipping it and doing it. She done got a figure back. You know, she come in the house. Yeah, she got to snap back. But I just think that was a stupid ass statement. A, that was just stupid. Like, like Harbaugh, why are you treading into those waters anyway? The, the way that this world is set up, anything can get you canceled. Why are you dancing around stuff like that when you're dealing with, let's just keep it real, you're dealing with a, a high number of single parent mothers that are sending their sons off to be in your care. You hear a lot of teams talk about the cultures like their father figure, and you don't want to alienate half of the, your your recruiting base because you're making comments about abortion. Shut the hell up. Nobody I mean, cares. Right. Nobody like, cares. Like, nobody like, cares about, about that. That's you don't hear Ryan people. Day talking about politics and abortion and the Roe versus Wade. He's trying to win games. I mean, what we, I mean, and, what we know Harbaugh is a staunch Catholic and he got like 80 kids as is. Well, then, but, I mean, if you're a staunch Catholic, it ain't like they squeaky clean either. I love you, mama. Ex exactly. And you should sit, you should, down here, the Catholics are the heathens. It's the Christians down here that wear the, the, the conservative wear. It, it's the Catholics down here that's blanking out of both sides of their drawers. It's not the Christians. All, look, all, all, all I know is, is when I heard that Harbaugh, I was like, eek! Like on the old media takeout, I was like, no, 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 no. Stay out of that. Stay, Stay like, out I of know that. you're trying to be funny, but I mean, but, for you to say, oh, I want my quarterback to, you know, his girlfriend just to give me not my, my give me her baby because she doesn't want the baby. Dude, it abortion or giving your children away in general, that's a hard enough decision. And it's a serious matter. Yes. It is nothing to be trifled with where, for you to just flippantly make a comment to get a few buzz claps in at a at a Big Ten media day. You need to be focused on continuing on the, the winning tradition that you set last year. It's going to be tough. Like you said, you have to go play in the horse shit this year, and they're going to be ready for you. Let's make no mistake about it. If Ohio goes 0-11, on that 12th game, the day at the weekend of Thanksgiving, they're going to be ready for us. You yeah. better have your team prepared. Hawaii so is going to want to kick your ass. The roll down Where's planet the with your khakis creased. Right. While you're climbing in tree houses. Like, right. Just calm down. And, and Michigan Mike, you know we love you like we love macaroni and cheese. But Harbaugh is wrong on this one. Shut up. <laughs> Shut your ass up. Go sit down somewhere. <laughs> right. Put a sock in it. <laughs> Put a sock in it, Jim Harbaugh. Like, stop. Before you get us into all kind of controversy, stop it. Michigan is, is one of the most prestigious schools. The reason why people hate us because we carry ourselves with this air of invincibility. Like, we ain't won in forever, but we still got our nose in the air because right. we're Michigan men and women. Don't bring that down starting to try to get into politics. You divide the fan base. Just stop it. Um, that's out of the way. T. Sizzle. I, I saw on Friday a name that was trending, and I immediately thought of you. I don't know why I thought about you on this one, but yes, I do know why I thought about you. So the name was one Beyonce. Beyonce was, was trending on Twitters, and I saw that overnight that she had released her seventh solo album. And I don't know, the reason why I thought about you immediately is because I was like, Tasha can't stand Beyonce. I, I don't think. I don't think you I don't think I've ever heard you play, sing, dance to a Beyonce tune in my entire life. So that got me to thinking, since on this show, if you're in the booth, you got to tell the truth. I was wondering, let, let's see if we can if we can back T-Sizzle into a corner. Let's give her a top five and see if one Miss Beyonce makes her list. So Tasha, the, you know how we close the show. The, 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 the floor is yours. Who are your top five female acts of all time? First what up, Mike? All, sir, let me let me clear this. Hey, Mike. Because earlier me... you said she didn't have but an eighth grade education. Was... You said that earlier. You said she... <laughs> Hey, those early lyrics. <laughs> Tell me what you think about me. 
I buy my own diamonds and I buy my own rings. <laughs> that is brilliant. That is Grammy Award now, nomination ready. Like, let's just get it out there. <laughs> I am not a fan of Beyonce's <laughs> music. Okay. Now, the one song, it was, I mean, it's a couple of songs. Like when she did that uh, that check on it. And the only reason I listened because she had Slim Thug and, of course, the cane. She was like, oh, boy, you're looking like you like what you see. Won't you okay, you're singing the first day, okay? Let you work up on it, ladies, let it check up on it. Watch it while he check up on it. Did you catch your weave when, when you was doing it? Midnight. <laughs> now, that song, I used to like that. Come on, Pink Panther. Um, I love everything that Beyonce has accomplished. What about her production? You didn't shake your ass on single ladies? No. Oh, okay. Well, let me I like I did a I did a nasty girl dance to partition. I know you like partition. And when I was single, me, myself, and I got me over the hump. Oh, but okay. I'm but I'm just not a fan of Beyonce's music. Now let me go and get that. I listened to her new album. Oh, you did? I haven't listened to it yet. I did it, I did it yesterday because I was like, Paul gonna try to come with the slander. <laughs> I said, let me get- I'm let trying me to back you in a corner. I was like, no, nah, you're gonna back me into no corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner. <laughs> Hashtag dirty dancing. <laughs> and surprisingly enough, because again, I am a supporter of a certain community of the LGBTQ community, this music fits that community. Because I've gone to several games. So like dance hallish type music. It's, no, it's 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 Euro. It's almost te- Euro techno gay club music, and I like that because like I like the big Frida on the lead single. Yes, like because I, I I have gone to gay clubs with my best friends because I used to go to the drag shows, and I mean when you walk in the gay club, it's, if you're a female especially, they are just the men are accepting of you. One guy kept calling me Fantasia the whole time I was in there. But the you main got a little American Irish about you, you know. <laughs> I, I, I can see that. Y'all but have I mean, I actually, I'm actually kind of. I mean, again, I'm not down with a lot of the lyrics. That and then B got nasty. She on here cussing. It got it, yes, baby. It's been liberated. Please tell me Jay Z is not on one of her tracks this time. No. She she done with that shit after Lemonade, huh? Is that what you're saying? No. no. Okay. But no, I actually listened to it. Uh, I don't really have a particular song in general that I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God. But I mean, would I listen to it again? No. <laughs> but if, but oh, you know, wait, if, there's a part two coming out. Yeah, it's See? a part. Yeah, it's a part. But that was just the salad and, and, the, and the appetizer. So let me go ahead and get my list. I have, of course, everyone's all time. Well, I'm not going to say everyone's all time favorite, but I love Whitney Houston. She got to be on there. She, okay, so let's check. We, we agree there. I got Mariah Carey. We agree there. And this is a, a, a shot in the dark. When I'm driving from city to city here at night, what I put on to get me home is Anita Baker. It, was she giving you the best that she got? Man. My I, mama was going to love that one. She's a big Anita Baker fan. I put on Anita Baker and I and I just go. Then here we go, and we're going to get a little controversial. Now, I know Madge is a little crazy now. She done did all this stuff to her body. She looked crazy. But then Madonna hit like nobody else. Madonna. Okay. You threw me for a loop there. Okay. She threw me for a loop. It's ho. <laughs> <laughs> Every time your name was brought up, I would act all nonchalant in front of an audience like you was just another show that y'all put the... Okay. Hey, you, you, you was killing that, though. I would think... Keep going. That was a hit. And the last one who I picked for okay, me. I, I like the diversity in, in this list. The one who I picked for me, another one who's who's a shot in the dark, who when I'm sitting here sometimes, when I'm cleaning up and I put on some of her more upbeat songs, is Tony Braxton. Oh. So seven whole days get you from one city to the next, huh? I'll put on Tony Braxton in here sometimes when I'm cleaning, and then when that, ooh, I get so high when I'm around you, baby. I can't touch the sky. You make my temperature rise. So, that was that was a that was a hit. Uh, I always thought of her as the slow singing lady. Like, I mean, she was she was Anita Baker when she came out. The first thing I said, oh my gosh, she sounds like Anita Baker. But Anita ain't no ain't nobody Anita. But let, let me 
go through some names that, that I didn't hear you say, and, and I'm just curious why. No no Beyonce, we know that. No Janet Jackson? What her whispering ass? Say artist, Janet Jackson is an entertainer to me. Cause just like Not you so much of a singer. Because everybody knows if you say something about Britney Spears, I'm gonna fight you. It's on site. If you say something Ball about Britney, Britney or along or or, or Dan Dan at Britney. I love Queen Britney. She's my girl. Okay. But she's an entertainer too. She's, she's an entertainer. Jamming. She can't sing. I mean, like I would put Christina Aguilera because Christina Aguilera can sing. Mike, this is all female as long as they're solo artists. So he said Aretha. Mike, you listen to Aretha Franklin? Yes, I had Aretha on there too. No, I'm just I'm surprised Mike listened to Aretha Franklin. What about uh, Mary J. Blige? No love for Mary J. Now you know I guess that because baby. She's yeah. the queen of hip hop soul. She's the queen of hip hop soul, but I don't. I only have like three Mary J. Blige songs in my. Was it the crack? Was it the crack? No, it's only certain songs that really hit me. Even though I'm, I'm bumping Mary, and I love Auntie, but it's only certain. Right. She's the cool Auntie to let you smoke weed in her house. Right, she's Monet Tahada. <laughs> <laughs> it's Auntie Monet, baby. But I mean, no, I, I mean, don't get wrong. I, I, now, I, I, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with Mary J. Blige too. But I'm saying the ones who just kind of get to me. What about what about Adele? Oh what yeah, Adele? Adele can roll in the deep, baby. Uh, okay, all right. Because I was going to say Adele. If you never heard her sing live, she she outdoes oh her records. God. She can yeah. throw down. Now we got Drew over here in the background whispering Patty LaBelle. What about what about Miss Patty? Oh my own I'm on my own. Why did it end this way? Hey, she gets down. Tina Turner get it on those <laughs> mopping days. Out of me. Mike, you got a big kitchen. That's a lot of mopping. You don't went through the whole discography to that Tina. He mopping like that. I've been with Tina we're rolling on the river. <laughs> Get out there and take that trash out, boy. <laughs> Stacy coming in doing the roll. All right, I can Tina. Without the foolishness, I can Tina. Right. Down. No, Stacy will throw that ass in the pool. She ain't gonna get no. She ain't gonna be one of them bop bop girls. <laughs> she ain't gonna be eating. Mike no didn't marry no punk. <laughs> Stacy ain't having that. Stacy from Vegas. She gonna swing back. Um. Okay, that was that was pretty interesting, there, Tasha. You once again, you surprised me with your list. I love the the uh, the addition of Anita Baker and Madonna because Madonna, for what what call it what you want, she ran the eighties, baby, and she ran the eighties and, and the then, early nineties. And then when she made her comeback with, oh man, yeah, 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 and she can really sing. She, I mean, like she wasn't she just, just. She just looked like uh, the little clown from. Uh, no. She looked like Jigsaw. Pennywise. You said she looked like Jigsaw. Get out of here. You said Pennywise. <laughs> okay, so Stacey chimes in. She says Lady Gaga. Yeah. Lady, now, Lady Gaga turned me into a fan of her Super Bowl performance. Did you see how she caught that ball jumping off the stage? Oh, I love like du Dua Lipa doesn't have I ain't never heard of Dua Lipa. Oh. I got news, I got mm, mm, mm. Come on, boy. I got news, I got You got to roll it. Now, that's my jam right there. Okay, no Doja Cat? No, no, uh, I can't even no. think of any more singers. Um, What about Freddie Jackson? He's a female art. You know what? Let me. And on that note, <laughs> what about Freddie Jackson? You are my lady. Baby, the let's first lesbian. Let the water run. Let's what? stay in there for hours. What is Drew talking about? Drew, get on the camera. Get on the screen with the gangster lean. You got look, hey, if he knocked this camera off, I'm blaming uh -uh. you. What it do, what it do. <laughs> Can't forget about Patty. Man, come on. Ooh, I'm on my own. This man gonna get a patty pie and, and take it back to his family down there. And Brenham shouts out to Lauren. Shot town in the building. Um, speaking of shout outs, Tasha T. Sizzle, shout out. Speaking of shot town, shout out to my cousin or whoever that Everybody was. Everybody got a cousin in Chicago. They hit they that one point, in Chicago. Uh, uh no, that cousin that hit that one point two 
eight billion lottery. Somebody hit that last night. It was a single ticket. Somebody in the state of Illinois. I'm gonna call it Illinois now. Right. It's, it's Illinois now. It's Damn. Illinois. So hey, hey cousin. Right. What's going on, BFF? <laughs> Let a brother hold something. I just need to just let me touch the hem of thine garment. Right. Let me touch. The hem of Thank you, the lady. This is your blood. <laughs> oh, I want to send a shout out to, to the lottery one. I want to send a shout out to everybody whose dreams was crushed. That they, they got to go back to work on Monday, including me. But um, I'm still work if I hit. Well, wait a minute. That's why Mike ain't on the show this week. He said he flew to Chicago, bought a ticket, and flew back. Mike. Mike. Remember that time where we we almost got arrested, and I gave them their fake name. My love. Remember that time when you need to change for a dollar and I just gave you the, 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 the money? I... Mike, we'll talk after the show, Mike. Um, on, behalf, <laughs> on behalf of Tasha T. Sizzler, your boy, Mr. P.L. Coulter, we will see you all in six days and 23 hours. Until then, peace. Good job in the city. Every night and day.